Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bortnick for AP Calculus AB. We are in unit six, integration and accumulation of change. Today's topic is 6.5, where we're interpreting the behavior of accumulation functions involving area. Enjoy today's notes. All right, welcome to 6.5, behavior of accumulation functions. Um, as what we learned in the last lesson, accumulation functions are functions of the form capital F of X is equal to the integral from X equals A, where A is a constant, from this variable to, to the upper limit of integration of x, uh, which is a variable, for the function f of t dt. And again, this dt at the end is, is identifying the variable with which the integral is being taken. Um, so they sort of match in this case. Now, as we mentioned in the last, uh, last lesson, uh, recognize that if you take the derivative of the capital uh, f of x, you will get lowercase f of x. And again, sort of that, that what we had written before uh, was we, we learned earlier in the year that if we take the derivative of f of x, that we get f prime of x. If we take the derivative of that, we get f double prime of x. You could actually keep going and get f triple prime of x or however many derivatives you need. But if we're going in the opposite direction, this thing taking this thing called an antiderivative, we call that capital F of x. And so because we can essentially move in either direction. Uh, if I take the derivative of capital F of X here, the derivative of that, that is gonna bring me to lowercase f of X. And so that is where this statement is coming from um, in the same way that like lowercase f prime of X is gonna equal f double prime of X. We're essentially just moving down this line one, uh, one way. So today's lesson is a review of a lot of things from Unit 5. So we did a bunch of stuff in Unit 5, specifically talking about how we know whether a function's increasing or decreasing, has maxes and mins, talking about concavity and points of inflection. We're going to analyze the first and second derivative to understand the behavior of a function. But we're talking today not about those. We're talking about the uh, behavior of capital F of X. So in general... Right, the rules that we learned back in chapter five are going to apply for this, right? Because the rules that we learned in chapter five, uh, we generally use them for lowercase f of x, but it's the exact same rules. So let's go through some examples here. How could we tell whether capital F of x is increasing? Well, we would need to know that the derivative of it is positive, and so uh, we can say it's increasing when capital F prime of x is positive. We could say that it's decreasing when its derivative is negative. So capital F prime of X would need to be negative. We know uh, that capital F of X would have a relative max when capital F of X changes sign. And I'm just gonna put, uh, put from positive to negative here. And uh, relative minimum when F of, capital F of X changes sign from negative to positive. We can say that a function, uh, that function is concave up when the second derivative is, um, is gonna be positive. So that would be when F double prime of X, capital F double prime of X is positive, and it'd be concave down when that second derivative of capital F is negative. And then a point of inflection occurs when that second derivative changes sign and uh, just generally changes sign. I can go positive to negative or negative to positive. And actually looking back at these up here, I wanna be careful. Relative maxes and relative mins are when the derivative changes signs, not when the original function changes signs. So I wanna really highlight these should be capital F primes here uh, for those. Be careful, we don't wanna accidentally uh, mis misstate that. So. Because we know that capital F prime of X is equal to lowercase f of X, we can actually just rewrite all of these where they say capital F prime of X as just lowercase f of X. So in general, capital F of X is increasing when capital F prime of X is greater than zero or when F of X is increasing because F of X is the derivative of capital F prime or it's the derivative of capital F of X. Uh, similarly, we know that capital F of X is decreasing when lowercase f of X is negative. We can see here um, that this is going to have a relative max when f of X changes sign from positive to negative. 
and similarly has a min when lowercase f of x changes from negative to positive. And it's going to be concave up when the derivative, so the second derivative of this, so that would be the derivative of lowercase, so that's going to be when f prime of x is positive, and when f prime of x is negative, it's going to be concave down. And there's going to be a point of inflection when f prime of x changes sign. So all of this row here is, is coming from the fact that we know that capital F of x, I'll actually uh, highlight this with a different color, uh, but capital F prime of x is equal to F of x. So all of these places where we had these capital F of F prime of x's, a different way that we could think about that is just that regular F of x needs to be greater than zero or, or for each of these things. Um, and that is in relation to trying to figure out the behavior of capital F of x functions. So let's use this information. Uh, none of this is new, right? Just sort of the way that we're thinking about this and uh, of what this capital F of X is uh, and the fact that we know that uh, the derivative of it is lowercase f of X. Uh, let's see, let's see what we've got here. Number one, let G of X be equal to the integral from A to X of F of T dt, where the graph of F is shown below and A is a constant. So this looks like an accumulation function, which we talked about, uh, I talked about earlier. We're finding the, uh, the area between some value A to uh, some X value as that X value is going on. Um, so the question here, you know, we don't even know what A is. We just know that A is a constant. And so the question is, where is this going to have a relative minimum? We see that the graph that they gave us is lowercase uh, f of x. Um, and so if we're going to find the minimum of g, so this g is this accumulation function, the minimum of g, if we, if we think about what g prime of uh, the derivative is, the derivative of g of x by the fundamental theorem of calculus is going to equal f of x. Right, where we take that x and that goes in for the t and then the derivative and the integral cancel each other out well just f of x so how would we find the minimum well we'd be looking for places where the uh derivative where g prime would be switching from negative to positive but we can also be looking to see where f of x is changing from negative to positive i see one place where that's happening that looks like that's happening at x equals three so in general our reasoning for this, oh, sorry, that's going from positive to negative. In general, our reasoning for this is we know relative minimums occur in this case when g prime of x changes sign from, I'll just put negative to positive. And so that's also where f of x would be changing sign. So, or f of x changes sign from negative to positive. So where does that occur? Well, three, it's going positive to negative, so that's not gonna work. Uh, but here we see it's going from negative to positive to here. That looks like that's happening at maybe like x equals 5.4 or something like that. So we'll estimate here it's not an exact value, that's fine. Uh, but at around x equals 5.4, we can see that that function uh, is switching from negative to positive. So therefore, there would have to be a minimum of the original function g of x, which, you know, we can't see here. This is f of x. Uh, but we know that a minimum had to have occurred. The maximum, though, we've already identified. That's what's at 3, because we see that the uh, f of x is changing from positive to negative. So we're looking for places where uh, f changes from positive to negative, and that looks like that's happening at x equals three for this graph that they gave us. Where are intervals where g is concave up? Well, again, if we know uh, that g of x is this, this accumulation function from a to x of f of t dt, and we know that the derivative by the first fundamental theorem of calculus is f of x, if we take the second derivative, that means the second derivative is equal to f prime of x. So with that said, we'd be looking for places where g double prime of x is positive or where f prime of x is positive. So f prime, since this is the graph of f that they gave us, is going to be the slope of this line. 
So I'm looking for places where the slope of this line is positive. And so that to me, that looks like that's occurring between uh, x equals 4 or t equals 4 and t equals 6 that we've got right here. So I would say the interval from 4 to 6, that, that, uh, that those x values uh, here would give us a positive slope, which means that the uh, f prime is positive, which means that g double prime is positive. What about intervals where g is concave down? So similarly, uh, since g double prime of x is equal to f prime of x, we're looking for places where g double prime of x is negative or where f prime of x is negative. Since this is an f graph, we're looking for places where the slope is negative. That occurs, appears to be happening on this interval right here from t equals 2 or x equals 2 to 4. So from 2 to 4, g would be concave down. What about points of inflection of g? So those would be places, again, where g double prime of x changes sign. And so since g double prime is the same thing as f prime, we could say or f prime of x changes sign. So since we've got a graph of f prime, or rather graph of f, uh, f prime again is the slope of this, of this uh, function. We see it has a slope of zero here, and then it has a negative slope. And then at x equals four, it switches from having a negative slope to a positive slope, which then goes to zero. The only place where it changes sign is it goes from a slope that's negative to a slope that's positive right here at x equals four. So that is our point of inflection uh, for g. And then if g of one is equal to five, what is the uh, maximum value of g on the interval from one to five? Well, if we're trying to find uh, the maximum value for this, um, we know that the relative maximum that we already found was at three. And because they gave us an interval from one to five, uh, we would need to test all of those, right? We, we would need to find the like absolute maximum here. And so the values that I would test here, I'm gonna make a little table to, to represent this, is uh, we could have X could be one, or it could be three, or it could be five. And again, the one and the five are coming from the endpoints of the interval that they gave us. The three is coming from the relative maximum, which we occurred, uh, which we already found back in B. And so it could be at any of these three. And the only way that I could tell uh, which of these three is, it's going to be is through, uh, you know, really testing that out and seeing what G of X is at those values. So how do we do that? What's that going to look like? Well, we already know that G of one is five. They told us that it's five. If we do th uh, three though, um, it's gonna be whatever, it's gonna be five plus whatever the integral is from, uh, from one to three is. So we started this at three, we'd be accumulating some area between x equals one and x equals three um, of f of t dt. And so how much area do we have between x equals one and x equals three? Let's see this visually. It would be this area here. Nope, and that's going from zero. So from one to three would be would be here. That looks like that's about uh, three units of area. So I have the five plus three units of area. That's going to be equal to eight. And then here for five, this is going to be uh, five plus the integral from uh, one to five of f of t dt. And what we see here is that if we go to all the way to five, that we actually are adding some negative area in. So when I go to five, it's actually going to make this eight less than what it was. So whatever value that actually is, is, is just going to be less than uh, the eight that we had. So to me, the maximum looks like it would be uh, when X is equal to three. Um, and that, that maximum value would be eight for that. Nice. Let's take a look at number two. Let g of x uh, equal the integral from 0 to x over 2 plus 5 of f of t dt, where the graph of f is shown uh, to the right. Find the x value where g has a relative maximum. Okay, so we know the maximum of g of x is going to occur when g prime of x changes sign from positive to negative. 
right? So we know that that's gonna occur uh, when g prime of x changes from positive to negative. The question here is like, what is g prime of x? Um, and so what I notice here that's different is that we've got a function in our upper limit of integration. So when we take that derivative, we're gonna be using our sort of variant of the fundamental theorem of calculus to say that g prime of x is gonna be equal to f of x over two plus five, right? That x over two plus five becomes the input for our function. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of that x over two plus five, which would be one half. So uh, we also then wanna find out where, uh, where this is changing signs. So that's gonna occur at like critical values, which would be where the derivative is equal to zero or it's undefined. Um, this can't be undefined. So let's find out where this is going to be equal to zero. If this is going to be equal to zero, um, well, the one half, you know, we can multiply by two on the other side. That means that uh, to the two times zero is going to go away. So f of x over two plus five has to be equal to zero. And then uh, if that's the case, we, we know, so we're thinking of some values where the function, the output of the function is zero. We can see that that occurs uh, really at, uh, at this place where, where we see that it's switching from positive to negative. It's occurring at three here. So what we want is we want this to be, uh, we want the input for this function to be three because that's gonna give us an output, f of three is zero and it is changing from positive to negative there. So I'm gonna set x over two plus five equal to three which means that x over two is equal to negative two, which means that x has to be equal to negative four. That would be the x value that if we plugged into this function would give us uh, a, a maximum for this. It would be a place where g prime of x would be switching from positive to negative. It's a place where f of x is switching from positive to negative. When I plug negative four in here, I get three, and we see that it is switching from positive to negative there. So that is it for uh, problem number two, and that's actually it for our lesson for today. As usual, we've got some practice. These solutions are posted. Please come to class with any questions you've got, or feel free to stop by office hours. Uh, good luck on your mastery check, and have a great rest of your day.